Hello, and welcome to Absolutely Studying. Today, we are going to be talking about the three levels of reading comprehension. If you are in my Study Skills Digital course, this was the module released this week was all about reading strategies. And so I just want to extend that to everyone and talk about a little bit more about reading comprehension. But first, I'm Terrell, and this is Absolutely Studying. I bootstrap my way through university while juggling a full-time job and a family. It was tough, but now I want to pay it forward. I want to supply you with all of the resources and support you need to flourish in your academic career. Today, we're going to be talking about reading comprehension, specifically about the three levels of reading comprehension. But first, I'm going to just take a second to talk about reading comprehension versus literacy, because I feel like sometimes people are not sure of which one I speak of. So let's start there. Literacy is essentially the ability to read. Are you able to read? Whereas reading comprehension is how well you understand what you're reading. Now there are going to be some areas, especially in the lower leveled reading grades, where this is a little bit gray, a little bit of a gray area. But once you get into university or high school, college, university, it, it, it kind of separates. So if you can read and you understand what you are reading, or if you then you are literate. But it doesn't stop there because as you take in and progress higher and higher into your level of academic learning, the textbooks, the material that you're expected to understand gets more and more difficult. Now, this comes with learning the base material, the base level of material that you are expected to know. So you do have to have some foundational knowledge once you get to high school, once you get to college, once you get to university. You do have to have some base level of knowledge of what you are reading about in order to be able to understand and apply things, especially like terminology. But your reading comprehension level also has to increase to allow for the ease of reading this material. And the problem is basically that it's it's not interesting anymore. It might be a little bit interesting, but it's not exciting. It's not like reading the newest adventure novel or anything like that. There's not very much in these textbooks that are going to hold your information except for your own passion to learn the information. And so that's why it's so important that every time you step away from a study session, that you really have a good understanding of what you read. And that's where reading comprehension comes in. If you understand what you're reading the first time, then you don't necessarily have to sit down and read it and absorb it every single time. You can read it once, take it in, and then you can do other study activities that will keep the information fresh and expand your knowledge so that you can synthesize and analyze the information and expand it to different concepts. So that is the importance of reading comprehension. I'm sure it was as clear as mud, but that's where we are today. So now Let's actually talk about this. Now that we know what reading comprehension is, let's actually talk about the three levels of reading comprehension. So first there is the literal, there is interpretive, and there is applied. Those are the three levels. So when we're talking about the first letter, the first level, which is literal reading comprehension, what you are what, what it is at that level is, can you read what is right there on the page? Can you read it? Are you able to read it and form the words? Do you know what the words mean? That is the literal level. So that is the level that often gets its gray area shared with literacy. Can you read it and can you understand it? 
So if you have a literal level of reading comprehension, when you go through your paragraph, you can identify the main ideas. If it is a, whether it's a textbook or a story, you understand what the main idea is telling you. And so, so many times we get to university and we pro progress through university or college and we have this literal reading level and we believe that we understand and we believe that that's good enough because we can extract the main idea out of the paragraph. We can extract it out of the chapter or the story. So we do know what it's talking about. We understand what we've read because we can pull out the main idea. Another hallmark of, literate, is of the literal level is that you can recall some of the details that support this main idea. So you might also be able to say, yeah, this was the main idea because of X, Y, and Z. You can pull out those, those, those supporting facts. And, you, and, and so that's how you're taking notes. You're understanding that topic and you're pulling out the facts. And that's still at that literal base level of reading comprehension. And another, th and the third hallmark of the literal level is that you can, in fact, organize the sequence of events that occurred. So if it is a story, you can recall the sequence of events, or if it is something you're learning in school, you can understand the main idea, you can recall the process in order, and you have the supporting, supporting ideas. And a lot of people believe that this is enough. But there's so much more with, a, with an improved reading comprehension. There's so much more that you can take away. The second level of reading comprehension is interpretive. And that's where things start to get really exciting. So with an interpretive reading comprehension, you can start to read between the lines. You can kind of predict the endings or anticipate consequences that are going to come out. So in a story that's, that's, that's simple, but for example, if you are reading your textbook and you are learning a process like ah, ATP, let's, let's just say ATP. So you're going through and you're learning this biological function and you're figuring out how to make ATP. Well, as you go through, you might be able to anticipate some of the cycles. You might be able to anticipate that even though it's using ATP throughout, you're going to end up with a surplus at the end. So this is a long, complicated process, but, and, and it seems to use up a lot of it, but there is, there is a, 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 a spot in the end where it starts to multiply and you end up with a surplus or anything like that with, um, with, 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 with that you're able to anticipate or even consequences. So for example, if you are studying, um, Oh. If you are studying uh, studying something and you can kind of start to anticipate different consequences or anticipate the sequence of events and how things happen as you go along through the process, then you're you're bordering on the interpretive level of reading comprehension. The second hallmark of an interpretive reading comprehension level is that you can start to state reasons for these events or consequences. So now, not only are you taking in the process, understanding it and getting all of those and taking in all of those uh, reasons that something's happening, you can now predict an outcome, but you can also explain why each of the events happened the way they were to get this result. And you can also make generalizations. So this is really important. This is where that synthesis and analysis that I'm always talking about comes in. So you want to be able to take in a piece of information. And even though you learned it in this one context, you want to be able to elaborate and expand that one context to other things. So for example, if we're talking about cell biology and we're talking about osmosis, we understand the concept of osmosis. But now let's 
move beyond the cells and let's actually start talking about tissues or other other cells that are not specifically like gut cells or, or heart cells, can we then go through and not only apply the logic of osmosis, but even concentration gradients, which are also, which would also happen in the case of a in the case where something is is with osmosis. If water's moving, then obviously other things are moving as well. And can we expand our understanding of osmosis to how these other chemicals or other items would cross a gradient? That is an interpretive level of reading comprehension. So when you've read something, now you can make these generalizations, you can synthesize this information to other topics and categories. And it starts to really expand and start linking concepts that you didn't originally think were linked. But now that you have this, this understanding, you can see how all of these things can move in such a flawless manner just by water or concentration gradients. Finally, let's get into our third level of reading comprehension. And this is applied. So can you read beyond the lines? Can you read beyond what the text is telling you in this particular situation? So applied now means that you can definitely make these generalizations. You can definitely take this one specific instance and see how it relates to other instances or how similar topics are related to it. You can now make comparisons. So it might be very, very similar to this other topic, but it could also be very, very different to this, to a third topic that you might have originally thought was very similar. And you're able to kind of see and decipher where those similarities and differences lie. You can see the nuanced information that even though some things have these kind of pieces in common, they also have all of these other things that are different and that's why they're not lumped together. You can also start to make judgments. Will this work? Won't it work? How well would it work? How likely is this to happen? You can start making some of these judgments because you have such a deep understanding of the concept from this reading. You're also able to make some recommendations or suggestions. How could this work better? For osmosis and chemical gradients, for example, it works really, really well with itty bitty tiny molecules, but not so great with larger ones. So why? What is the cause and effect of that? And how could you balance that out? You can also start to make decisions so that you now have a solid and concrete enough understanding of the information that you can make a decision uh, about, like, about a whole plethora of things. And finally, create alternative endings. So you can kind of, pick a point and decide if, if, if this was changed, could it be something else that happened? Or if that was changed, would it be this ending? How do we get to these different endings with these little tweaks? So I hope you understand, after all of this, I hope you understand a little bit more about reading comprehension. If you don't, you can always head to my website and check out my study skills digital course. We have an entire module on it and this, the digital course in itself is more than 30 units. Like it's, it's very, it, it'll get you everything you need for your, for the study basics, for those essential study skills. It'll get you set up quite nicely, whether you're in high school, college, university, it's really helpful. Anyways, if you have not done so already, like this video and subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos every week and they are always about study tips, organizational hacks, and homework help to help you through the study struggle. You can also visit my website. There are tons of free resources as well as my study skills digital course that was just launched. I'm so excited to share it with you and I'm excited to see you here again. And until next time, I hope you have an amazing adventure.